so good. Bearish your medical mumbo jumbo. Hello. Welcome in to Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. Oh, my. News, weather, sports, and, of course, all the local info you need to start your day. Is that a real show? No, it's somebody who's making a joke. Forget it. Talk of the Town on 103.7 WTIB, 94.1 WNBU, Cable 7 in Greenville. And now, listen or watch live at WTIBFM.com. Everybody still awake? All right, big finish. Now, here's your host for Talk of the Town, Henry Hinton. Welcome into uh, the 8 o'clock hour of Wednesday's Talk of the Town, the third day of January 2018. Glad to have you with us. We're all over the place this morning getting you set for the winter weather that is expected to be uh, in our area later on this afternoon. And we just had a, an update in the 7 o'clock hour, and we could potentially, and I say potentially with quotations, see anywhere from 5 to uh, five, I should say five plus inches. I don't, I don't even want to say five to eight, but five plus inches could be expected for our area later on this afternoon into the evening hours of tonight. I'm here. I'm here. We had a visitor in the lobby that totally distracted me. Everybody. Had something to do with golf. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> there's only a few things that can distract me. Golf is one of them. Welcome into Talk of the Town uh, Wednesday. Thank you, McGee, for taking it. You were the oh, yeah, first yeah. to uh, well, be less you know. distracted than the rest of us. No, I was distracted, but I just knew that Michael was about to uh, go yeah. ape you-know-what if we didn't get in here. He was he was going a little nutty, wasn't he? <laughs> so. By the way, uh, I just um, I just got to tell you, Donald, Don Wilkerson from uh, Wilkerson Funeral Home texts me and wants to sponsor Obituary Roulette every day <laughs> since I've come up with Obituary Roulette. They're going <laughs> to... I think it's a great idea. <laughs> At Wilkerson Funeral Home. <laughs> Obituary roulette brought to you by Wilkerson's. Uh, let's see what we got. You mentioned the weather already. The uh, snow starts what time? Between 3 and 5. They're kind of moving it back it's a little bit. been pushed back later. But the bad news is they also have increased the uh, number of inches we may get up in this area. You folks down around Newburn, Moorhead, Jacksonville, you're going to be uh, less impacted, but you're still supposed to get snow. Mm-hmm. But from Greenville to the uh, Virginia line is what Tom Lanka from the National Weather Service, we had him on in the first hour, and he said that is uh, the expectation that we're going to get, what did he say, five to eight inches? That's, I just want to say five God, plus. I, hope he's I, hate wrong. To not, I hate to think it could be that much. I hope he's wrong. I asked if there was any chance he was wrong, could be wrong, and he said no. He was pretty confident. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like it at all. Uh, again, the uh, East Carolina women's basketball game will be at 2 o'clock today. Um, they have moved it up from uh, 7 o'clock to 2 o'clock because of the weather. So Heather Macy will um, go into a game. They uh, And how many has UConn won in a row? 83 Just conference 83? games. Conference games. They've won 83. 83 conference games in a row. And uh, the last time they came here last year, they beat East Carolina 91-44. to Do you think there's a chance? No. Okay. Well, there you go. I don't. Not, I say that. I, not and being very all, optimistic, all are you? With respect. Yeah. But I, there's, no, there's no team in the conference that has a legitimate shot at beating UConn. And, and it's been that way now for the past three, four seasons. Yeah. And that goes for most teams in the country, not just the American. Um. Brad Crone's going to be on this hour. Brad, of course, is a political analyst uh, from a company called Campaign Connections in Raleigh. Uh, Brad has uh, been involved in um, both Democratic and Republican uh, political races, mostly Democratic over the years. But Brad's a, a good friend and an honest broker when it comes to looking at politics. And, and he has some – I saw him on NC Spin over the weekend. He has some interesting – things to talk about uh, with regard to what's going to happen uh, if we look into our crystal ball, what's going to happen in 2018. First of all, uh, we'll talk about the fact that um, a judge is going to hear arguments that the three judges, the three-judge panel, has um, look, they're looking at um, getting some uh, arguments into the court system again on the districts that the Republicans have drawn. 
Uh, it is expected, frankly, that these uh, that these these district these, these judges. Uh, James Wynn of the Fourth Circuit, uh, Catherine Eagles and Thomas Schrader, both of the U.S. Middle District of North Carolina. By the way, Schrader is a Republican. But it's expected that they are going to probably reject these uh, districts again. Uh, and if, it, if they do, this will end up at the Supreme Court. And then the question will begin to be discussed. How quickly will the Supreme Court hear it? And will it mean that the May 8th primary scheduled here in, uh, in North Carolina could be moved back. Now, I haven't heard anybody say that it could get moved back, but that's one of the things that you have to worry about if, this, uh, if these judges do not make a decision on Friday and, uh, and there's an appeal. Either way, either side could appeal. But uh, I can tell you that if the Republicans lose this at the, at the, at the, level, at the, at the, the judicial level on Friday, they will su- appeal to the Supreme Court. They've already said that. And so they think that Clarence Thomas is going to be the deciding factor on this. And he's shown his hand to be a little more favorable toward the Republicans on this, in spite of the fact that this could be considered a racial issue because, uh, you know, the, uh, the first group that came in and threw out the districts, the judges came in and said, well, these districts are no good because they used race to determine the districts, which I've always found really funny since the... <laughs> Since if you go back to the Civil Rights Act, you know, it, it was th- th- these th- all this gerrymandering started because of race. And by the way, we have racial congressional districts, including District 1 here in eastern North Carolina, represented by G.K. Butterfield. That's nothing but a gerrymandered racial district. That's what that is. I mean, just call it what it is. Everybody knows it. Yesterday. In Raleigh, a Wake County Superior Court, uh, Paul Ridgway, who I happen to know, by the way, I've, I've known uh, Judge Ridgway for a long time. I've known he and his wife uh, for many, many years. They're fine people. But uh, Judge Ridgway was the judge, he just happened to be the judge, that heard the case on the Winterville Town Council race. You know, uh, the Pitt County uh, Board of Elections See if I get this right now. As I understand it, the Pitt County Board of Elections and uh, had requested a new election. They originally had certified the election, but then they found out that there were like 10 people that voted in the Winterville election that should not have voted because their area had not been annexed yet. It was set to be annexed, Correct. but it had not been annexed as of the date of the election. So there were t- and and um, and Ricky Hines had won the election by one vote, and so the Pitt County Board of Elections came in and said after they determined that there were people that voted who should not have voted, they came back and said we need to have another election. Well, then uh, uh, the uh, the challenger in this race filed an appeal on this, but there is no. There is no state board of elections right now. As you know, that the whole state board of elections is tied up in the Roy Cooper legislature battle over whether or not we're going to have a one board that's a board of elections and ethics commission. And so uh, what ended up happening is it ended up going to a judge in Raleigh yesterday, this judge uh, that I mentioned, Paul Ridgway, and he made the determination that the contest is over and uh, Ricky, Ricky Hines is the winner of the, uh, of the race. And so uh, Hill was, uh, I'm sorry, uh, not, that's, that's not correct. Hines was the one that challenged. It is Mr. Hill who got one more vote. So uh, it appears now that uh, Mr. John Hill is the winner in the uh, Winterville race. So that race has now been determined by the courts. Uh, another thing we'll talk to um, Brad Crone about is the fact that the uh, legislative um, session will begin January the 10th in Raleigh. And how about this? Tomorrow, have you heard about this, Weaver? Tomorrow, Duke and Carolina will be in court. I have heard about this, yeah. Together. Yeah. 
this is, this is a lawsuit filed against both Duke and UNC, and it has nothing to do with basketball. <laughs> but, but it has in, a little to do with the rivalry. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you're talking about the same thing I am. This is an antitrust complaint that has been filed by a Duke doctor who is saying that the UNC hospital in Chapel Hill and the Duke hospital colluded to the detriment of the uh, ability of doctors to make more money because they had a behind-the-scenes handshake that said, I won't hire your doctors if you don't hire my doctors, <laughs> which, of course, is illegal. It's a free market. These doctors should be able to go out and negotiate whatever deal they want to negotiate. Unless, you know, the, unless this isn't America anymore. But you got two hospitals right next to each other up there, eight miles apart, UNC Hospital and Duke Hospital, with this behind-the-scenes agreement that I won't hire your doctors if you don't hire my doctors. Yeah, see, I get that as part of the rivalry. You don't see it that way? No. Hmm. It, was, it was an agreement. It wasn't a rivalry. Yeah, I know, but they don't want each other. They don't. They don't want to cross party lines, so to speak. Yeah. I don't have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't hire our doctors, we won't hire your doctors. Right? Well, this doctor, Dr. Danielle Seaman. It's like players. Our players won't go to your team, you don't come to ours. Oh, you know that's not true. I mean, they 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 work each other butt over trying to get the same players. Well, no, no, that's what I'm saying. That once they're already there. Well, I don't think I don't think it would be in that player's I was best just interest seeing, to transfer. I guess I'm just seeing it different than, than you are. <laughs> You're seeing so, it from the sports side of I'm, things. I'm, yeah, I'm looking at So this is going table. to a U.S. District Court tomorrow. Catherine Eagles, the judge, will hear arguments on Thursday to hear if Dr. Seaman's complaint should include all skilled medical workers employed between 2012 and 2017. Eagles could approve a smaller class instead perhaps limiting the litigation. I mean, and so here's the thing. Are, are all the doctors hired in that five-year period going to get a check from Duke and UNC Hospital? Uh, the judge also is considering a proposed settlement between UNC and Seaman, Dr. Seaman's team, which has experienced uh, securing antitrust settlements from powerful companies. Her San Francisco law firm got $415 million dollars from Google in a similar case when Google and Adobe and Apple said that they would agree not to hire each other's best workers. But now you're talking about a public institution because even though Duke is private, UNC Hospital is not. So Duke and UNC are denying that there was an existence of a no-hire agreement. But Siemens' complaint cites emails referencing the inside deal after an employment courtship of more than three years with UNC's chief of cardiothoracic imaging ended in frustration. <clears throat> this is uh, Dr. Paul Molina, who wrote this in 2015. He said, I agree that you would be a great fit for our cardiothoracic imaging division. Unfortunately, I just received confirmation today from the dean's office that lateral moves of faculty between Duke and UNC are not permitted. There is reasoning for this guideline, which was agreed upon between the deans of UNC and Duke a few years back. I hope you understand. Dr. Seaman then wrote back, there are only two academic centers in this area where I could work, and I'm already working at one of them. And she was actually being recruited away from Duke to go to work at UNC. And then all of a sudden she found out that there was this agreement, and it was admitted by the dean Actually, by it wasn't the dean who admitted it, but it was this guy, Dr. Paul Molina, the, UN, the uh, uh, let's see, was he the chief of, uh, he was one of the, 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 the chiefs over there at UNC Hospital, sent back an email to her and said, I can't hire you because there's an, uh, an agreement between Duke and UNC that we won't hire each other's doctors. And now UNC and Duke are denying that there was any <laughs> such agreement. That's a lot to take in. I'm and so they're going to court tomorrow to, to determine what happened on it. And how about Mitt Romney? It looks like Mitt Romney could well be positioning himself to, um, to run for Orrin Hatch's Senate seat in, Oregon, in uh, 
um, Utah. Uh, yesterday, if you're looking for a hint, yesterday he changed his Twitter from Massachusetts to Holiday, Utah. So his now, uh, what difference does it make where his Twitter's coming from? Yeah, well, man. Speculation running rampant about Romney running uh, for Hatch's seat. Uh, yesterday, apparently President Trump made a personal phone call to Orrin Hatch begging him to run. But Hatch said no. He said, it's time for me to retire. And so um, it looks like uh, Romney, who, of course, is Mormon, along with Hatch, is going to move back and, um, um, uh, or he doesn't even have to move. You don't have to actually live in the district to run for Senate. You can run uh, a la Hillary Clinton, right? Yeah. Hey, and here's good news for you ladies who are having hot flashes. <laughs> it's a transition. <laughs> How about this? A, 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 pharmaceutical comp- a pharmaceutical company here in Greenville, Fervent Pharmaceuticals. Are you familiar with them? Fervent? I'm not. F-E-R-V-E-N-T. Fervent Pharmaceuticals has just announced that they have <clears throat> successfully submitted a uh, application to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for a, uh, a proprietary lead drug to treat menopause symptoms, including hot flashes. So who knew that hot flashes would be cured right here in Greenville, North Carolina? Fervent, F-E-R-V-E-N-T. Uh, George Royster, you know him? Founder and uh, founder and chief executive officer of Fervent said, Enough. achievement of this regulatory milestone represents an important advancement in the development of FP101, which we believe has the potential to bring relief to millions of women suffering from hot flashes, night sweats, and insomnia associated with menopause. That's a big deal, isn't it? Mm, yeah, it's a huge deal. But I've never heard of that if, company. If the drug that cures hot flashes... And some of these menopause uh, symptoms was developed here in Greenville, North Carolina. By the way, they're getting ready to do a trial that will enroll uh, 110 women at a dozen study study sites here in North Carolina. They're also going to do it in Illinois, South Carolina, and Tennessee. The sites in North Carolina, if you're interested in finding out more, the sites here in North Carolina will be Cary, Charlotte, Hickory, Raleigh, Rocky Mount, Salisbury, Wilmington, and Winston Salem. Why aren't they doing it Why in Greenville? Why not Greenville? Well, they found it, the drug was founded here, but they're not having the, any of the uh, study. They're not having any of the opportunities. But I guess if you're if you live in the area, you could go to Rocky Mount or uh, Raleigh, or, or you folks down toward the coast could go to Wilmington and and get involved in um, in this study to cure hot flashes. So congratulations to a local company here in Greenville, Fervent Pharmaceuticals. What are you you doing, Weaver? Weaver's over there showing us nasty cartoons off his phone. That's not. (laughs) That is not accurate. That was a. a, No, it's a. It's a. It's a a hot flash reaction. It's a cartoon (laughs) picture of Kim Jong Un (laughs) and uh, President Trump. Okay, Uh, I got to see that during the break. Yeah. All right, let's get a break in. Uh, we'll get our news, weather, and sports in. We'll give you an update on the uh, <laughs> Your cucumber. snow entry into eastern North Carolina. And then it's coming. Brad Crone will uh, update us and uh, take a look at the year 2018 in politics. We'll be right back. We're not just introducing the 2018 Toyotas, we're reducing them. It's the introduction reduction at Greenville Toyota. 2018 Corollas, $149 a month. 2018 Camrys, $169 a month. Hurry to Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money.
Pirate Nation. Don't miss when ECU Women's Basketball hosts the 11-time NCAA National Champion, UConn Huskies, on Wednesday, January 3rd in American Conference action. Be sure to pack Minji's when the Pirates tip off against the Huskies at 7 p.m. Be among the loyal and bold by ordering your tickets today online at ecupirates.com. That's Pirate Women's Basketball versus the nationally ranked UConn Huskies, Wednesday the 3rd at 7. Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. My prescription refills. My son's shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents' care. My chart. Vitant My Chart. Vidant MyChart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidantMyChart.com or call 1-855-MYVIDANT to learn how you can sign up. Why settle for a 2017 model when you can have massive reductions on a 2018 Toyota? It's the introduction reduction at Greenville Toyota. 2018 RAV4s, $179 a month. Plus, get our advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. This is your WITN Morning News Update on 103.7 WTIB and 94.1 WNBU. Good morning, everyone. It is currently 827, 11 degrees in Greenville. I'm Billy Weaver, and this is a look at your WITN News headlines. A winter storm warning will be in effect from noon today through 9 a.m. tomorrow for all counties east in eastern North Carolina. A strong low-pressure system moving up the coast will result in wintry precipitation for a large portion of the area. Snowfall totals up to 4 inches are possible, some even more than 4 inches for most inland areas, while coastal areas will likely see totals of a half an inch to 2 inches. Now, the low will move northeast of the area Thursday morning, leaving us with another round of Arctic air and gusty winds. Wind chills will again drop down into the single digits overnight. Very little snow melt is anticipated as temperatures stay below freezing until midday on Sunday. Greenville police say an off-duty police officer shot and killed a suspected shoplifter uh, outside of Academy Sports on Memorial Drive. It happened yesterday around 3.30 p.m. Police say their officer was shopping at the store when a person told him a man was allegedly shoplifting. The officer confronted the 35-year-old man, identified himself, and displayed his credentials. Police say at that point a struggle began and the man tried to attack the officer with a knife. The officer was able to draw his weapon and shot the suspect who died at the scene, according to police. Now, the SBI has been called in to investigate the shooting. Names of the officer and the suspect have not yet been released. Keep an eye on WITN and WITN.com for updates on this story as information becomes available. Police have confirmed the identity of a man and a woman found Dead early New Year's Day, North Topsail Beach police charged Mackenzie Britton, 28, with two counts of murder after a man and a woman were found dead at his 3rd Avenue home in the early morning hours of New Year's Day. Britton appeared in Onslow County Court yesterday afternoon where he was given no bond in a January 22nd next court date. Investigators say Britton told them that he shot two people when they arrived at the scene around 1.15 a.m. on Monday. Police say the victims were 56-year-old Connie Britton and 71-year-old Dow Gray. Now, police say the woman was the mother of the suspect, while county documents show Gray owned the home. Police have previously confirmed that the suspect also lived at the home. And deputies are searching for a man wanted for the Christmas Eve murder of a Bellhaven man. Warrants were obtained yesterday for the arrest of Jake. Jaquan Newmones, the 23-year-old, is wanted for the December 24th shooting death of Timothy Moore. 
Moore's body was found by a passing motorist around 3 p.m. that day on the dirt road off Beach Ridge Road outside of Bellhaven. Deputies say Moore had been shot. In addition to the open count of murder, Newmones is wanted for robbery with a dangerous weapon and felony larceny of a motor vehicle. Beaufort County Crime Stoppers is offering a $1,000 reward for any information leading to his location and arrest. It is currently 830, 11 degrees in Greenville. I'm Billy Weaver, and that's a look at your WITN news headlines. Building clouds for today with rain snow developing later in the day. Highs reaching into the middle 30s. Rain chance or precipitation chance, chance I should say, 80%. For tonight, we're looking at snow and strong winds. Lows in the low 20s. And for your Thursday, cold with clouds clearing by the afternoon. Highs only in the low 30s for tomorrow. And lows tomorrow night around 14 degrees. So not getting above freezing really for the next few days. I'm not happy about this. Got a lot of problems with you people. <laughs> News and weather services. Did you guys have Festivus, by the way? Did you have Festivus at your house over the holiday? No. Festivus, where you have the, you know, the Festivus poll? No. And no. everybody airs grievances? No. No. You don't remember that from Seinfeld? Yes. We didn't have it yet. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've always loved that episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> That's when they go to George's dad. They say, okay, dad, it's your turn. He goes, I got a lot of problems with you people. <laughs> 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 oh, Lord. Uh, news and weather, a service this morning of Beauty Bar Medi Spa. While you're planning all your gym activity and diets and all that stuff, hey, you don't have to do any of that. Just go to Beauty Bar Medi Spa and sign up for this uh, Ultra Shape Power. You may have heard my daughter-in-law doing that new commercial. Uh, she's really, I'm telling you, she's, she's had great results with it. It's uh, called Ultra Shape Power. It's exclusively here in Greenville at Beauty Bar Medi Spa. And uh, it's just three sessions, and then your belly will look like it did 10 years ago. So uh, Ultra Shape Power is, um, is great because there's no downtime, no pain. It's an Ultra Shape vibration. Fat cells are destroyed. No other tissue is damaged. And um, it's just three treatments, and the fat cells in your belly are destroyed and not coming back. Uh, call our buddy Nikki Blunt at uh, Beauty Bar Medi Spa to learn more about it at 752-1406 or visit them online, beautybarmedispa.com. Beauty Bar Medi Spa on Red Banks Road in Greenville, 752-1406 for the Ultra Shape Power. All right, it's 832. Going to break. Uh, Billy Weaver is leaving us. Taking Mama to breakfast this morning? I don't know. A little cold outside, Henry. Mom don't want to go out and cold? Nah. Yeah, probably a good we'll idea. We'll see, though. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give her a ring. Tell mom I said hello. I will. Love you, Mom. And uh, let's go to break. When we come back, Brad Crone, one of the top uh, elections and political analysts in the state of North Carolina, will take a look at what's going to happen in 2018. Be right back with Brad right after this. We're not just introducing the 2018 Toyotas, we're reducing them. It's the introduction reduction at Greenville Toyota. 2018 Corollas, $149 a month. 2018 Camrys, $169 a month. Hurry to Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Some pretty incredible things were born in the Carolinas, like barbecue. Born right here, baby. First in flight. Maybe you've heard of it. Mini golf. Boom. And a few of my favorites, the Panthers and Pepsi. Born in the Carolinas. The touchdown dance, perfected in the Carolinas. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamston, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. All 2017 inventory must go here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is commercial truck season. Come see our great lineup of Ram commercial vehicles for all your work needs. Check out the Ram 2500, Ram 3500 with cab and chassis, Ram 4500 and 5500. Also Ram Promaster and Ram Promaster City. All 2017 Rams must go during Ram Power Days. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. 
across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents care. My chart. Vidant My Chart. Vidant My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidantMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVidant to learn how you can sign up. Why settle for a 2017 model when you can have massive reductions on a 2018 Toyota? It's the introduction reduction at Greenville Toyota. 2018 RAV4s, $179 a month. Plus, get our advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Eight thirty-six. Welcome back. Talk of the town here on uh, Wednesday morning, and of course uh, today is our second show of two thousand eighteen, January the third. Good to have everybody with us. And of course, two thousand eighteen. Right now, we got two things on our mind. We got snow number one, and then uh, shortly we'll have politics. The legislature is back in session one week from today in Raleigh on January the tenth. They've got a lot of things on there. Uh, list to deal with uh, in the legislature. And then, of course, the question is, uh, what are the legislative districts going to look like? And they've got to get them set because the primary is coming up on May 8th. Let's go to the telephone right now and talk to one of the uh, foremost experts on on uh, politics in the state of North Carolina, our friend Brad Crone from Campaign Connections, which is his company uh, in Raleigh. Brad's been involved in so many uh, campaigns uh, across the state of North Carolina and and does research and really knows more, I think, about what voters are thinking in this state probably than anybody. Brad's on the phone. Happy New Year, Brad Crone. Good morning. Happy New Year. Pitt County Schools open tomorrow. Uh, that, that's a doubtful. <laughs> <laughs> I think y'all are going to get a wallop uh, of winter weather. You know, my but guess, uh, and this is not official, so if any parents or kids are listening, this is not official, but my guess is they won't be open the rest of the week. <laughs> phones will ring off the hook. Yeah, exactly. Stop the phone the calls hook. immediately. Uh, okay, let's talk about 2018. Um, you know, the, uh, the legislature is still dominated by the Republicans, uh, got veto-proof majorities in both chambers, the House and the Senate. Uh, you take a look at uh, the election that just took place down in Alabama. People want to make, I think, too much out of that. You know, I made the comment after the after Roy Moore lost that. You know that the Democrats shouldn't get too excited about that because, uh, you know, the worst candidate in history almost won that race. So, right. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I well, don't. I don't know what we can take from that. But where do you think the voters in North Carolina are right now? Well, we did a poll for some corporate clients uh, second week of December looking at saying, let's look at what happened in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and is that going to translate into North Carolina? So we did a poll specifically, Henry, looking at unaffiliated voters in North Carolina, and they're so important because they represent almost 30 percent of the total votes cast in any general election. So where they go, the majority usually ends up going. And what was really interesting about that uh, survey was that the unaffiliated voter in, in North Carolina is rather ambivalent right now. 47% approval rating for Donald Trump, 51% disapproval rating. So Trump's upside down, but he's not upside down in double digits. Well, that's almost, like by, that's almost in, within the margin of error, isn't it? Absolutely. So it's like 50-50, so kind of. When you ask the generic ballot question, uh, if the election were held today, would you vote for a Democrat or Republican for the state legislature? It was a push. It was a 36-36 push. Wow. So it, that that tells me 
that the unaffiliated voter in North Carolina is sitting back saying, listen, you know, the legislature's cut taxes. The economy's going pretty good in most sections of the state right now. Now we've got some trouble areas in rural North Carolina, and I think the legislature's aware of that. But overall, in your metro markets, in, in, in Greenville in particular, in Raleigh, in Charlotte, in Greensboro, Winston, Asheville, Wilmington, the economies around the metro areas are doing relatively well. And then they also say, well, they've given teachers a 9% pay raise over the last two years. And, um, you know, they like Roy Cooper, but they're not willing to fire the legislature at this point in time. And and I continue to say that if you want, if the Democrats want to be able to gain seats in the legislature, you have got to give voters a reason to fire the Republicans in the in the legislature. And at this point in time, the Democrats are so incompetent of putting together a campaign apparatus um, <laughs> that can effectively win a campaign that uh, the Republicans have got to be sitting pretty high and happy right now. You know, it's interesting. Uh, all those things you mentioned were there also. The, uh, the teacher pay raises, the economy was improving, all that, when Pat McCrory lost. So, you know, the, the, the Democrats had to kind of change their playbook a little bit, not – not campaign on teacher raises, not campaign on, uh, you know, things that uh, the Republicans weren't doing. They had to manufacture something. And so along came something called HB2, which really was the factor that got the governor beat. So now, it was. Uh, so uh, t- two questions. Number one, are we going to hear HB2 again in 2018, or is there going to be some other manufactured story coming from the left? Uh, I don't know if House Bill 2 will resonate any at all. Uh, all the data that I've seen, people sort of put that in the rearview mirror and they're moving on. Um, there may be another manufactured issue. Um, I'm not from the left, so I have not seen it yet. <laughs> I reckon we will see it when we get walloped with it by the two by four. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll tell you, though, the most interesting race, at a national level, is taking place right there in your backyard. Yeah, and that's going to be the Walter Jones Scott Dacey primary that's going on. And you know, the- uh, Brad, we're hearing some other names thrown around for that. It ain't over till it's over. And uh, of course, there are a lot of folks. Uh, you, you know, you, you, Walter Jones has been bulletproof. I mean, he's uh, Taylor. Taylor Griffin came close a couple of years ago when he had massive amounts of outside money helping him here in eastern North Carolina. But nobody's ever really come close to beating Walter before, particularly a, a Republican. Uh, well, and you know, I'll tell you some why. other name because there's some, there's, some, there's some people out there thinking about it right now, I believe, because of Walter's vote on the tax cuts. I mean, there's some very upset people out there. Right. And, and you know, you can get that. The thing that interests me, you know, running to the right of Walter Jones is going to be extremely difficult. You know, Walter is a bona fide conservative. Um, I, I can remember just watching the campaign in 94 when he had switched from Democrat to Republican, talking about smaller government, lower national debt, and less taxes. But Walter's, I think, playing the role of contrarian right now. And, and, Good Lord knows North Carolina likes the contrary, and all you got to do is look at John East, Jesse Helms, and Sam Irvin. And Donald Trump. That I can think of, <laughs> and Donald Trump. Yeah. So, but I, I'll tell you, I, I was on NC Spin with Tom Campbell, and I made the comment about Walter Jones being tough as train smoke. And Tom asked me, he said, what does that mean? I said, well, the last poll I saw on Walter in August, he had a 90% name ID with most likely voters in the 3rd District. That's absolutely unheard of. And then a 73% job approval rate. Yeah. So moving, I mean, Walter's set in concrete. Moving him is going to be just extremely, extremely uh, difficult, I think, at this point in time, even with the votes on the Affordable Care Act and on the tax cuts. Walter's going to have to get his message out on why he voted against the tax cut. You know, because what you see on social media now is once again Walter Jones voting with the Democrats. But when Walter votes with the Democrat, he's not voting because of the the reason the Democrats are voting uh, for something. He's voting because of that national debt problem, and he'll tell you that yeah. straight. He won't and vote for anything that adds Twitter. money to the national debt. And I, you know, uh, 
I've I've known Walter my whole life. My father knew Walter's father from when Herbert Bonner died in 1965. Um, you know, I just respect Walter from that standpoint of taking a hard stand. I respected Jesse Helms for taking a hard stand. Um, you know, so he tells you where he's coming from, and then he does what he says he's going to do, and and that to me is sort of refreshing in politics. The other really interesting race in North Carolina. Uh, Henry, that's going to be a national spotlight, will be over in Charlotte in the race between Pittenger and Reverend Mark Harris. Yeah. Same same type situation there. Um, and then the other big races and will for be. Fo- and for folks, to- for folks who don't know, Brad, uh, uh, tell us about that race because Mark Harris is a very far-right candidate, and um, and they're painting uh, Robert Pittenger, much like you hear about Tom Tillis now, as part of the GOP establishment. Absolutely. And Pittenger's former state senator, very conservative, bona fide uh, conservative. And uh, Harris ran against him in the primary two years ago, lost by 137 votes. Harris is the former pastor of First Baptist Church in downtown Charlotte, um, evangelical minister. And what you're seeing play out is a war that is ongoing in the Republican Party between what I call your Main Street thinking conservative voters and your Tea Party voters who just want to burn the whole establishment down. And that's now what. That's the, and, not- and, and by the way, that's what they're doing. I was noticing this weekend one of the Sunday morning news shows that that talked about the number of uh, seats the Republicans have lost because of the Tea Party. <laughs> Right. Well, and and at some point in time, uh, you you got to begin thinking: Is this going to be healthy for the party uh, politically in a long term strategy? And that that's going to be re- the as we look back on this period of time, that's what I think people are really going to look at. But it's not exclusive to the Republicans. The Democrats are doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, David Price, who's probably uh, GK and David are. Uh, G.K. Butterfield, the congressman from the 1st District, David Price, the congressman from the 4th District, are probably your two most liberal members of Congress from the state of North Carolina. And uh, Congressman Price was elected in 1986, uh, has served all the way through with the exception of one term in 94 when Fred Heineman beat him. And uh, he's going to have a primary. He's going to have a, a position from Fayetteville who's going to run to the left of David Price. So what you're seeing really is the polarization of our politics. And you got to question long term, is that going to be a good thing? And I read an article this weekend in the New York Times about many of the millennials are saying, you know, this may be a good time right now for us to look at a third party. And um, yeah. I, that may be an avenue of where we're going, Henry. Brad Crone from uh, Campaign Connections, one of the top uh, campaign firms in the state of North Carolina. Brad's uh, uh, probably does more research on what voters are thinking in North Carolina than anybody else. And uh, uh, Brad, I don't want to run out of time, but uh, what are voters thinking now when it comes to Donald Trump? You said that uh, he's about 50-50, 47-51 on approval rating. But if, if you're a candidate in North Carolina – and you got to run for office this year. Do you run with Trump? I mean, Trump's on a little bit of a roll right now since the tax cuts. People are pointing out all the good stuff. Uh, and if he would just stop tweeting, I think, you know, we would start to believe that he really knows what he's doing up there. But but, I, I, but what do you do if you're a candidate? Do you embrace Trump or you, you, you just not ever mention him? No, I don't think you uh, – I think you're going to run your own campaign. Um, I think that Trump – universally with all most likely voters is probably around a 43%, 44% job approval rating. Um, in suburban and rural North Carolina, you can run with them. In your metropolitan markets, you can't. Uh, and I keep telling people there will be two Democratic waves in the state of North Carolina. It will be Wake County and it will be Mecklenburg County. So Raleigh and Charlotte uh, will see really high performance of Democratic voters. The rest of the state, you're going to see pretty much status quo. Um, so rural North Carolina, rural eastern and western North Carolina, they're pretty uh, complacent. They're pretty happy. They may not like necessarily the, the process that the president 
uses, but the results that he's getting, the the fact that he's willing to take on establishment, that he's willing to tear down the house to rebuild, that seems mighty, you know, impressive to some of the voters out there. And I think in North Carolina, you're probably at a push um, overall with all most likely voters right near a, a, an even split. If if Trump can come in with successes on infrastructure this year, and then possibly even uh, the speaker wants to run some welfare reform issues uh, that have not been reformed since 1998, um, then I think you could see some impetus, some energy building for uh, Republicans to be able to compete more competitively in the 2018 off-year elections. Brad, we got 30 seconds. Handicap the legislature, the legislature for me. What are the chances, in your view, that Democrats could take over the House and or Senate? And, and, and if they can't, can they at least knock down the number of votes the Republicans have to, to get rid of the veto-proof majority for Roy Cooper? I don't think they'll take back the state House or the state Senate. I do think they'll pick up seats in particular in the metropolitan Mecklenburg, Wake County, and they'll pick up enough seats in the state House to break the supermajority. All right. Uh, great stuff. Uh, Brad Crone from Campaign Connections. Thank you, my friends. Great seeing you. Thank I look, you. Look forward to seeing you at NC Spend this year. We're going to be over at Public TV. I'm excited about that. I am, too. Stay warm. Yeah, I'll try to get Tom to book us together so we can chat. Uh, It's 8.51, nine minutes in front of 9 o'clock. Talk of the town here on Wednesday morning, January the 3rd. We'll be right back with McGee on sports and another look at this snow on the way right after this. All 2017 inventory must go here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is commercial truck season. Come see our great lineup of Ram commercial vehicles for all your work needs. Check out the Ram 2500, Ram 3500 with cab and chassis, Ram 4500 and 5500. Also Ram Promaster and Ram Promaster City. All 2017 Rams must go during Ram Power Day. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. Pirate Nation, don't miss when ECU Women's Basketball hosts the 11-time NCAA National Champion, UConn Huskies, on Wednesday, January 3rd in American Conference action. Be sure to pack Minji's when the Pirates tip off against the Huskies at 7 p.m. Be among the loyal and bold by ordering your tickets today online at ecupirates.com. That's Pirate Women's Basketball versus the nationally ranked UConn Huskies, Wednesday the 3rd at 7. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents care. My chart. Vidant My Chart. Vidant My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidantMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVidant to learn how you can sign up. Welcome in to the new Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Are you ready to drive a little to save a lot? I'm Rod Emery, General Manager at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Come see us here in Washington for the best deal on a new car, truck, or Jeep and a great sales and service experience. Lease a new Ram Crew Cab truck for just $299 a month and only $299 due at signing during our Drive and Discover event. We're looking forward to seeing you at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, located on Highway 264 in between Greenville and Washington, or visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com.
6 minutes in front of 9 o'clock. Talk of the town here on Wednesday morning, January 3rd. Thanks to Brad Crone for being with us this morning. Turned out we salvaged this show, didn't we? There were some issues, but we salvaged it. <laughs> and we're going to plan to be here tomorrow. <laughs> Give you the full forecast again on the snow. But first, let's check McGee on sports. We've got a big, big, big uh, basketball game here in Greenville. that has been moved to this afternoon. Here's McGee. Yeah, the top run, UConn Huskies. The best women's team in the land, 11 and 0, 1 and 0 in league play. They come to Greenville today to take on ECU. That start time has been moved up to two o'clock due to the forecast of inclement weather. UConn has won 83 consecutive league games. The Pirates are eight and six overall, 0 and 1 in league play. In fact, UConn's tallest player, 6 6, Azura Stevens, is out of Cary, uh, North Carolina. She transferred in from Duke, so she's averaging uh, double digits per game for the Huskies. So again, two o'clock tip off between the Pirates and the Huskies this afternoon from Menji's Coliseum. The men will be on the road at USF to ball set for seven o'clock in that one. And top 25 men's action tonight, number 12, North Carolina goes on the road for a big test against number 24, Florida State. Brand new advisory from the National Weather Service. I just got it. And uh, look at this. They put Greenville now in the four to six. Uh, range. They've added New Bern in the four to six inch range. Hmm, that just happened then. Uh, the Kenston four to six inches. Snow Hill four to six inches. But when you get above uh, Greenville, Washington six to eight inches. Uh, actually, that's uh, that's actually the east and Bell Haven six to eight inches. Williamston six to eight inches. Uh, Plymouth six to eight inches. Columbia four to six inches, and there. Are, you know, when you get up to around Edenton and a Husky now, it looks a little less clear. But um, one thing we know is that it's going to be treacherous driving. Uh, there are um, there are some uh, models that show Greenville could get nine inches, Newburn get nine inches. Don't and look at that model. Plymouth and Washington get ten and eleven inches. Don't even bring that model up. <laughs> Avoid that model. Anyway, stay safe out there. Drive carefully. We'll be here tomorrow morning to cover it for you. See you tomorrow. All 2017 inventory must go here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is commercial truck season. Come see our great lineup of Ram commercial vehicles for all your work needs. Check out the Ram 2500, Ram 3500 with cab and chassis, Ram 4500 and 5500. Also Ram Promaster and Ram Promaster City. All 2017 Rams must go during Ram Power Day. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents care. My chart. Vident My Chart. Vident My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidentMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVident to learn how you can sign up. Pirate Nation, don't miss when ECU Women's Basketball hosts the 11-time NCAA National Champion, UConn Huskies, on Wednesday, January 3rd in American Conference action. Be sure to pack Minji's when the Pirates tip off against the Huskies at 7 p.m. Be among the loyal and bold by ordering your tickets today online at ecupirates.com. That's Pirate Women's Basketball versus the nationally ranked UConn Huskies, Wednesday the 3rd at 7 cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. All 2017 inventory must go here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is commercial truck season. Come see our great lineup of Ram commercial vehicles for all your work needs. Check out the Ram 2500, Ram 3500 with cab and chassis, Ram 4500 and 5500. Also Ram Promaster and Ram Promaster City. All 2017 Rams must go during Ram Power Day. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. 
Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs.